Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. Um, this video is in the series Slow Stitches where I share some of the kinds of stitches I use in my slow stitch work. Um, and uh, this time I want to talk about the blanket stitch. Now the blanket stitch is commonly used as a utilitarian stitch around the edges of blankets, hence its name. Um, so on this little book wrap I've used it. Can you see? I hold it still around the edge, which is, you know, a fairly, like I said, a fairly common use for it. Um, I also use it around the edges of patches if I've made collage pieces. So here you can see on this little journal, do you see there the red um, around the edge of the patch there where it, where it's fraying, and on the other side as well. Yeah, here, do you see? You know, red on the blue, it shows up quite well. So there, you're, it's kind of dual purpose. You're using it as a decorative stitch, um, especially if you choose a contrasting colour. Um, but also, it, it's doing a job around the edge where that cloth wasn't fraying nicely. This is a nice fraying. This fraying, I don't want to cover up. That was doing an unpleasant fraying, so I chose the blanket stitch there. Um, and then this little piece, which is just a sample of a cloth weave that I made just with plain old sheets. This just this is only blanket stitch, and this just shows some of the effects that you can get with blanket stitch on the flat, so to speak, rather than as an edging stitch. And it's just varying the size of the stitch, um, the placement of the little crossbar in relation to the little arms that come out, and how you connect the stitches together or not. You see here they're they're quite big stitches with a big gap, and they're and they're detached from the next round. Whereas in the middle, I started in the middle and spiralled out. In the middle, it's focusing, you can see that I did quite small stitches and joined them up, so it makes these little boxes. And even the shape of the boxes, you can vary depending on where you place the next row of blanket stitch. You could absolutely do this backwards and forwards as well. I just like to do it round and round like that. Um, the piece I really wanted to show you, where I did a lot, a lot, a lot of blanket stitch, um, many different kinds and shapes and forms. I don't have the, the piece here, it's a wall quilt. Um, it's hanging on a friend's wall in England. But it was in an exhibition I did with my group CQ West, and so there's pick, this is the catalogue. So I'm hoping you can see there's some detail photos. I can angle it because of the light. And I'm just looking at the screen at the same time. There we go. So you see all this black here. This is blanket stitch. And all this white, also blanket stitch. See, it looks completely different, but the stitch is made in exactly the same way. And all around the edge here, blanket stitch. And over here is another section of the same quilt. You'll recognise my photo there um, from my thumbnails. Angle it again because of the light. Again here, all this gold around here is blanket stitch um, as well. So you see, just by it's a simple stitch to do, and I'm, I'm going to show you, but just by varying the form and the, um, I think it's most clear here with the black and white, the, the form and the size and the placement of that one stitch, you can get some really interesting effects. Um, okay, so, it, look at this cuteness. I'm sorry, I, this was I just was laying on my desk and I used it as a bookmark. It's a mean, mini, mini little quilt that I made for a mouse. Well, it could be for a mouse. Anyway, <laughs> it's by the by, nothing to do with blanket stitch. So I've got my little piece here to stitch on. I, in general, or nearly always, like to stitch on two layers. I don't like to stitch on one layer of cloth. I like a bit of substance, um, but I don't like to use wadding or batting anymore. So this on top, I think, is a piece of old sheet that's been dyed with onion skins, probably. Um, and then I've backed it with another bit of old sheet. And I always test my bits of old sheet before I commit to using them by needling through them with an empty needle to see if they're nice to stitch through or not. It's just a little tip that I mention here and there. So I've got my needle threaded here with... Um, this is just two strands of DMC embroidery floss. You could use any, you know, if you like to use cotton. They've got stuck to each other. That's bright. If you'd like to use cotton perlay, you can use that. Um, you can use more or less strands of embroidery floss. Or, you know, whatever, just a hand sewing thread. 
In fact, you can also play with how many strands you use, one strand up to six strands, you know, if you're using embroidery floss, um, within the same piece, and that gives different depth to the stitch as well. Okay, so I'm going to simply, I'm going to bring it up to you like this. I can't get it any closer and see it myself. So if it's not close enough for you, you can, I've recently discovered on videos on YouTube, if you do that thing, if you've got a touch screen, you know that movement? You can zoom in. You can zoom in if it's not close enough. Okay, so I'm going to come up somewhere. I'm just going to do a little line straight to start with. So I'm coming up there. And then if you imagine that the blanket stitch is going to go here and here, so I'm going to come, imagine a triangle shape. So I'm going to come down here and do quite big so you can see. Down here, and then up again on the other corner of the triangle. Do you see what I mean when I'm talking about a triangle? So as I come up here, I need to make sure that this thread that's coming out of the, the first place is behind the needle. And that, when you don't get a knot in your thread, do you see what's happening? That traps that loop and makes that shape, that sort of L, upside down L shape. So I'll do it again. So then I can't, you kind of visualize where you want the next stitch to be if you want them to be roughly the same size. So I'm going to come down here and up here, making sure when my needle's through that this both strands, both strands of that thread are behind. Like that. And that is as simple as that. You'll also notice um, that I'm not working in a hoop. That's just because I don't like to work in a hoop. If you work in a hoop, you have to um, go up and down in two movements because your fabric's taut. Um, if you want to learn how to do embroidery in a hoop, I would suggest that I'm not the person to show you because I don't use a hoop. So just to do it once more, you go down. So let's say I wanted to do it, I can do a tiny stitch here now if I like, so I could come down here and come up here. Just making sure that both strands of the thread are behind the needle. And there I've got a smaller stitch. So you see already, just by doing that, it's already interesting, I think. You could turn so you're not going in a straight line, you know, so you just kind of, what I do is I visualize in my mind's eye where the stitch, where I want the stitch to be. Like say I wanted to do a super duper big one like that. So I just sort of see, almost see the line in my head on the cloth. And then in, with my needle, I go into the far point of that line. And then I come up where I want the loop to be caught. And make sure the thread's behind and pull it up. And you don't want to pull it super tight because everything will pucker. But do you, do you see? Do you see, do you see? So um, I'm going to, actually I'm going to, if, when you get to the end, I'll show you here because I'm going to cut this off and go to do a circle. When you get to the end, you want to make sure you come over your loop, your last loop that you've trapped, and just go in behind it. Can you see that? Just to catch it down, basically. And then you pull through to the back. Um, and then I'm just going to finish off on the back because I want to do the circle, just to show you how, if you put two lines together, how it starts to look. <clears throat> I'm going to do a knot. I always do my knots like this with my two hands. There's all kinds of fancy, fancy ways of doing knots. You know, rolling it around your finger or a quilter's knot where you wrap it around there. I've just always done it like that. You know, it's, it works for me. It's more than one road that leads to Rome. Okay, I'm just going to come up in the middle just, you know, for fun. Because circles have a middle. So exactly the same thing, only you, if you want to draw lines, you go for it. I don't because I like it to be wonky and uneven. If you want regular lines, you could draw around something with one of those pens that disappears, you know, with either heat or water, or just a very fine pencil line that's going to wear off or get covered up. But I just kind of, again, in my mind's eye, visualise where I want the stitches to go. Do you see there I just did that little movement just to make sure the tension was good? And I'm just going to work my way around like this. It's actually a really nice stitch to do once you get into the rhythm of it. And I'm not too bothered about them being even. In fact, I almost prefer them not to be. 
I just think it's more interesting generally when you look at a piece of work, uh, you know, a decorative piece of work, that if, if things are all different everywhere, otherwise the eye goes to one part of it and then another part of it and sees the same thing, kind of. And um, it's less interesting, I think. Anyway, it's a very good justification for doing wonky. <laughs> it's organic. But, as I always say, you do you. If it pleases you to have everything straight and lined up and even, then you do that. Okay, so now I'm coming back to where I started from. Here's where I came out in the beginning. So I want my last blanket stitch. I want the thread to be caught there in that same hole, like that. Do you see? To complete my circle. So I'm going to come in somewhere between there and there-ish. And then I'm going to come up through that same hole. Ish. Ish-ish. Or, you know, somewhere near it. Trap my loop and then go back down again into that same hole. You can see that. Do you see? I'm, so I've got the, the loops trapped between where the thread's coming out and where my needle's going in. And I'm going through to the back. And there I've trapped it. So there's my first little spirally thing. It's not really a spiral. So now I need to come up to start my next row. Um, and then you have to kind of make a decision, do you want to go between your stitches with your next row? Or do you want to line them up? Or And I don't really overthink it. The best thing you can do is experiment to see what you like the look of the best. I'm going to come up, not in the middle, just somewhere, you know, there. But somewhere between those two points. Like that. And then I'm going to put my next stitch here. So I am going to join that leg to that leg. Do you see what I mean? But you can experiment with how it looks. If you join them like this, then you'll get spokes, like spokes of a wheel coming out, like or like a spider's web. Or you could put, I'll do it here, because it's quite a big gap. I'll put my next stitch in here. So I'll go in there and I'll come up in the space, trap the thread behind. And then I made an extra spoke in my wheel. Obviously, you'll have to make extra spokes as you work out, otherwise, you know, the gaps get bigger as the circle gets bigger. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to come up through roughly the same hole. And then, see here, you can even sort of audition. Do I want to jump right over there, like that? Do you see, or is that too big? I think that's a bit too big, so I'm going to put another in-between stitch in. Like that, and then I'm not going to join to there because that would be too small. I'm going to bypass it just so you can see how it looks and come up again in the space. You see, and then, and then it's crossed over it there. So you see it just poking out there. And um, at the moment, I've got them. See, now my thread's the wrong side, so I'll tuck in behind the needle. At the moment, they're sort of not varying much in size, so just to show you, I'm going to go and do a huge one. I'm going to go way down here somewhere and come way up, back up there, like that. So you're thinking about the lines that you're making and also the, the spaces between them as you're working. And then maybe I'll do a really small one here. And in terms of slow stitch, because it's actually just one simple movement you're making over and over, from that point of view, it's lovely to do. Basically, you're taking one bite, as if you're doing a running stitch every time, just one bite of the cloth. Um, but because you're thinking about your stitch placement and size and, you know, all that kind of thing, I find it so relaxing to do. You see here now I'm making a, this shape here is going to be a pentagon because it's got the two sides here and the three sides there. So it's made a pentagon shape. If I come up here and join onto that. And now I'm coming back to the beginning again. So now you have the choice, in fact you had the choice from the very beginning, whether you go, because that's where I came out for my second round, whether you go in there and finish off and start a new round, or you could even just carry on almost in a spiral form, um, 
so say I came up here and came somewhere in there like that and that's you know if I line that up a bit better you could almost you know do you see if I'd done that properly how that would be a tiny little gap but you know passes mustard and then you just carry on round so you haven't stopped you know so you're now doing a spiral in effect and I'm running out of thread but I think you probably I'll just finish this off get the idea so I hope that you like that and if you haven't tried doing blanket stitch or well, you might not have tried blanket stitch at all but certainly if you've only been using it as a um, you know utilitarian stitch around the edges of things and you hadn't thought about it as an embroidery stitch in itself then I do hope you'll give it a go and um, if you have any questions you can put them down there and also FYI I won't say this every video just I'll just say it for a while but there's now a private Facebook group um, which I set up when I started doing the weekly slow stitch uh, project this year 2024 for people to share their work but it's also there to share work any work um, made following my tutorials so if you'd like to join that I'll pop the link down in the description you'll be made very welcome I'm sure um, and in the meantime I look forward to you joining me next time for more cloth tales thank you bye bye